Welcome to the ultimate guide to the speaking section. This is where I'm going to share with you an overview of what's involved in the speaking section, uh, the format and strategy for success, and finish up with a few tips that'll really be helpful to get the score you need in the speaking section. So let's get started. And first of all, we'll start with the format. The format of the, of the speaking test is that it's 15 minutes, there's three sections, and it's face-to-face -face with an examiner. Now on test day, you'll do the listening, reading, and writing sections all in one shot for about two and a half hours, and then your speaking section will take place at a, at a separate time. Now it may be later that same day, or it could be on a different day altogether but it will take place at the test center and you'll meet face to face with an examiner. In some countries, uh, uh, having your speaking test on a Zoom call is available, but make sure when you book your test and arrange your date that you are clear on whether you have to go to the center for your speaking test or whether it will be on Zoom. The main goal when it comes to the speaking section is to display your speaking ability and your fluency. So what is fluency? Well, let's, there's three aspects that I want to share with you that you know you've achieved fluency when, first of all, you feel comfortable. You can speak and share and uh, do this in a comfortable way. So you're not feeling overly anxious and overly nervous. And this may seem like a difficult thing, especially when you know you're being evaluated during the speaking test. But the most important thing is to try to relax and stay within the range uh, when you're speaking and using your grammar and vocabulary where you feel comfortable. And this shouldn't be too difficult because for the entire speaking section, you'll be talking about you and your everyday experience. You'll be sharing uh, qu uh, answers to questions about you in section one. In section two, you'll be giving a talk about a story from your own life and your own experience. And in section three, you'll be giving your opinion on, on topics that are common and that you'll be able to share uh, quite comfortably with. And once you're comfortable, this will also improve your confidence. And again, you want to stay in the range of grammar and vocabulary that you feel most confident. And you'll feel confident if you're well prepared. And this takes time, so you'll want to make sure that you've taken the time, maybe with a partner, and you've practiced different uh, parts of the the speaking section so that on test day you will feel confident and once you're comfortable and confident this will lead you to being competent you will be able to display your skills and your ability and clearly communicate at a high level and display your english to the best of your ability so fluency really is it's not being perfect it's not speaking quickly, it's just speaking in a relaxed and comfortable way where you feel confident about what you're sharing and communicating and you're doing it to the best of your ability. You know, fluency when it comes to uh, making mistakes and, and uh, saying things the way that maybe you didn't uh, say the best way you could, Fluency doesn't mean just keep going and, and, and live with it. It means that you can adapt and you can adjust. So if you do make a mistake, you can correct it. If you say something in a way that you don't think was the best way, just repeat it or rephrase it and continue to speak. So again, it's not being, uh, being able to speak perfectly or quickly. It's just being in that zone where you feel comfortable and confident and competent enough to display your English to the best of your ability. 
So let's talk about the three sections of the test. And before we do that, I want to talk to you what might be called section zero. And this is before the test begins. And this is where you'll meet the examiner. You'll make your first impression. And the most important thing here, again, is to try and relax. Take a breath. If you're feeling nervous, just try to uh, settle in. Because during this time, as you're meeting the examiner, you'll have the opportunity to give your name and show your ID. And you'll be able to do some speaking and get kind of get warmed up. And one thing that will help you to relax is realize that the examiner really is there to help you do your best. The examiner is not going to try and trick you or do things that will make it more difficult for you because the examiner's goal, just like yours, is to see you speak to the best of your ability. And that's the examiner's goal. So in a way, the examiner is on your side. So think of the examiner as your friend. Because all through the speaking section, you're going to be sharing about your life and your experience, just as you would to a friend. It's very informal. You don't have to have any special words or vocabulary. And while you want to make a good first impression, you don't want to make it your goal to try and impress the examiner too much. The examiner has probably dealt with dozens or even hundreds of test takers before you. There's nothing fancy or special or even academic that's going to impress the examiner. What will really make a good impression is if you just speak clearly and uh, do it in that comfortable, confident, and competent way. So take the time before the test to just settle in, relax, and get to know what the examiner expects. And then the examiner will tell you after all these preliminary things are finished that the test is about to begin. And this is where we come to section one. Out of the 15 minutes, section one will be four or five minutes. And the questions are going to be about you and your life. And it's simply a matter of displaying your English skills to be able to answer the questions. And let's talk about this for just a moment. The topics will be familiar to you. There won't be any topics that you can't address and, uh, and be able to talk about because they're about your home, your hometown, and your family, your work or your study, and your interests and your likes and dislikes. Remember, the main topic of the speaking section is you and your life and your experiences. So the good strategy to take is to just make sure that your answers aren't too short or too long. You'll want to include one or two sentences in every answer. So for example, if you get a question like, do you work or study? Well, you're not going to just say, I work or I study. You might say something like this, extend your answer into one or two sentences. Right now, I'm studying at the University of Ottawa, and I'm enrolled in the business administration uh, program, and I go there and take full-time studies at this university. So you've just given one or two sentences to answer that question. And then the next question you're asked will probably be a follow-up or a similar question. Throughout the speaking section, you'll have one overall theme. It could be the uh, education, it could be employment, it could be family life, or even diet and nutrition. The key is that you answer naturally and your answers aren't memorized. So don't try to memorize special answers ahead of time. Don't try to memorize academic word lists so you can use four or five special words when you're speaking. You want to be spontaneous and not overthink your answers. Again, just as if you were having coffee with a friend, picture the examiner in that way, and that's the kind of answers 
that the examiner wants to hear in section one. Let's talk about section two, because, you know, uh, one of the greatest fears in the world, uh, one of the top fears is public speaking. And so here in section two, you're asked to give a talk. And this might be one of the most nervous things that you're going to do on test day. But again, it's important to stay in that comfortable, confident, and competent zone. You are talking about a common experience from your own life. And so this should not be an issue. And again, you're only speaking to the examiner. You're not making a public speech. You're just going to talk for two minutes. The whole section takes about three to four minutes with your two minute talk. You are given a one minute to prepare. And this is where the examiner will give you a cue card with a topic and it'll have three to five bullet points and you'll be given one minute to prepare. And then the examiner will also give you um, some note paper where you can make notes in that one minute that you prepare. And following your talk, the examiner will just ask you a couple of follow-up questions about what you shared in your talk. So in this way, the examiner is also being spontaneous listening to you and just asking you questions of interest about what you've shared with the examiner. So just include everything that you're asked to do. Simply include uh, the answers to the questions in the bullet points and speak naturally. And this will help you to get a good score on the exam. So the strategy here is, again, make notes when you have the time to prepare and use the notes. Now, when you're making notes, don't write out full sentences. You're not making a script. You're just making points that you that will help you to stay on topic. It will help you to give a good flow and cover everything that you want to cover in the, in the speaking uh, in section two while you're giving your talk. And again, it's going to be uh, quite natural and, and, and easy going. So you don't want to be reading from your notes like it's a script. You just want to use your notes as kind of an outline and guide for what you're going to say. When it comes to vocabulary and grammar, again, you don't need to use any special terms or fancy terms. You don't want to be overly complex with your grammar. One of the things to realize is that you will be sharing a story from your life. So you'll be using, uh, uh, you want to be, have the ability to uh, talk about the past and how it's connected with your situation now. So you'll be using things like simple past and past continuous and present perfect mostly when it comes to grammar. And one of your big concerns might be pronunciation. Well, pronunciation is simply speaking clearly and at a good pace and a good rhythm. And if you're worried about your accent, it's important to realize that everybody has an accent. I have an accent. It doesn't, uh, non-native English speakers, of course, have an accent. But you don't have to speak without an accent. You can still speak clearly and pronounce things clearly. And don't worry about your accent. Your accent is who you are. So it actually helps you to be more genuine and real uh, in your communication because that's who you are. And really, remember, the topic of the speaking section is you. So just be honest. Uh, don't try to make up answers. Don't try to come up with anything fancy. Just be yourself with your accent and with your opinions and with your ideas and thoughts and feelings. And this is how to get the score you need in section two. So let's go on and let's just talk about section three, because section three, again, will be a very similar to to uh, topic to what you talked about in section two, except that it will be more general and personal. 
than personal. So in section three, you will be sharing your ideas, your thoughts, and your feelings, and your opinion. But when it comes to sharing these things, you won't be talking about yourself personally and using your personal life as examples. You'll be talking more in general. And this will take about four or five minutes. You'll be asked three or four questions. And it's more like a discussion about the topic. And again, it's a continuation of the whole theme of the speaking section and especially what you talked about in section two. And again, it's general, not personal. Up until now, in section one and two, you've been talking very personally and sharing your personal experiences. But for example, let's say in section two, you were asked to share about something that's very important to you, something that you own, a belonging that you have that's very important to you and how valuable it is, uh, maybe in terms of money or just sentimental value. And you've just shared this specific uh, experience and story in section two. And now that same idea is going to be extended into section three. And maybe the question will be, um, what is the most important symbol of status in your country? Now, this is where you can share in general. You're not going to share what's most important to you. You're going to share what's most important to people in general and say something like, a lot of people in my country uh, use their finances and their money as a status symbol. So the, the more belongings they have, like a nice car and a nice house and a good job, is a sign of status in my country. So again, you're talking about people in general rather than specifically about you. So let's just finish up with maybe what I think are the most, uh, well, before we do that, let me just finish up with this strategy just to, to uh, so I don't skip over this. Remember, you're sharing your ideas, your thoughts, and your feelings. You're not being judged on your opinion. There is no wrong or right answer. Your opinion cannot be wrong or right. What you're simply being judged on is your ability to express your opinion, whatever it is, in English. So here's my final tips for the speaking section. Number one, and this might seem funny when it comes to your speaking ability, but one of the most important things that you can do in the speaking test is to listen carefully. Make sure you listen carefully to the questions that the examiner is asking you and answer those questions directly. This is why it makes no sense to try and have memorized answers and special things to say ahead of time. You just want to respond to the question that you're given in the most natural and competent, comfortable, confident way possible. So what's really important is to listen to instructions and listen carefully and just respond to what you're being asked. So make sure that although it's a speaking test, you're really tuned in to listening to what is being asked. And number two, keep it simple. Keep it in the zone where you're comfortable. Keep your answers where you in the zone where you feel confident. And if you're comfortable and confident, your ability will really come through. Again, it's not about fancy vocabulary or complex grammar. It's talking to a friend and just, it's very informal. The speaking section is the most informal part of the IELTS exam. So just keep it simple, be yourself and respond accordingly. And the last tip, just speak clearly, pronounce clearly, speak at a pace where you can do this and you'll have success in the, in the speaking section 
of the IELTS exam. If you want more tips and tricks and, and suggestions and strategies for the IELTS exam, be sure to subscribe to this channel and you'll find uh, over 150 videos that'll be really helpful to you in whatever IELTS part of the IELTS exam, whatever section or question type you're looking for help with. And I want to wish you all the best as you continue to prepare for the IELTS exam.